state of the data. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if you have a, situa a situation like these are your dots, then it's really easy. I mean, there's only one, you know, the straight line will be something like this. Something like this, somebody can argue, maybe this is a better line, that's a better line. So the point is, um, the point is um, that at a first approach, like I always try to show you to do, to do things intuitively as opposed to jumping right into the formula, if you didn't have a formula, you would take a ruler and literally play around with it to figure out which is the best possible straight line that fits the data. Now, of course, we have to be more precise about it. How do you define the best possible straight line? You needed to have a precise definition if we're going to develop a formula that will give us the answer. But at this point, without a formula, just using our intuition, you just take a ruler and, and, and draw a straight line. So this is for you, please, and pass this on to Aljo for his useful for in suggestion. Um, so, and so since we'll be spending most of the chapter talking about straight lines, I think it behooves me to talk a little bit or remind you about the mathematics of a straight line, because we'll be using that throughout the next couple of chapters. So the first thing I'm going to put down is something which, for some reason, nobody ever forgets. Literally, I ask every class, nobody ever forgets this. I don't know why. Everything else, every, everything else everybody always forgets. But y equals mx plus b, right? That equation, for some reason, nobody ever forgets. I wish I, I really am not curious why. Why? Right, it keeps going again. You're going to have it again. OK. OK, now, of course, um, well, most of you probably remember the m is called the slope, which is basically the angle of the line. And the b is called the y-intercept, or simply the intercept, which tells you where it cuts across the y-axis. So in this case, I would guess the y-intercept would be around, if this is 140, this is about 142, more or less. I'm sorry, if this is 140, this is 135. So this would be about 137. So if you had to write out the equation, you would say, now well, so let's talk about the slope for a minute. I have to remind you that if you have a, 40, since the slope, which is the m, is equal to the change in y compared to the change in x. And again, if you've, some of you are rusty on this and not catching it right away, either ask me in class to explain it at this moment, or ask me after class, or read the first couple of pages of the chapter where they discuss slope, of course. So in this case, if you have a 45 degree line, which means that every time you change, the, that means x equals 1, y equals 1, x equals 2, y equals 2, x equals 3, y equals 3. If you talk about the change from this going from here to here, well, you went along a certain amount over here, but you went the same amount, so the change in x and the change in y was exactly the same, so the slope would be exactly 1. So in the case of a 45 degree line, this would be a slope of 1. What about if the, if, the, if the line is steeper than 45 degrees? Well, that's more than one because the change in y is going up quicker, so the top gets bigger than the bottom. And so in our case, let's take a 45 degree line. I don't know, a 45 degree line or something like this. I'm just guessing. So I would say our slope is maybe a little bit bigger than one. I don't know, 1.1, 1.2. I mean, it's really hard to guess because you know, it depends upon the scale of the numbers also. Um, if I really wanted to be exact here, I could say I'll take a number over here and say, and go, let's say, go a certain amount over here, and take a number over here, and then go a certain, and then you actually measure the change in x and the change in y and divide them, and I probably get a, a much better estimate. But I'm going to say it's like 1.2, something like that. So I'm saying the slope in this case. So I would say the slope, the, the equation of the straight line is y equals 1.2 times x plus 137, because the intercept was at around 137. And I'm sure when I plug all these numbers into the computer, it can't be that far off, because, because this is what it looks like. Um, now, once you have the straight line, what would you do with it? Well, first of all, the straight line by itself is valuable because it's basically, instead of dealing with a thousand dots in front of your face, you have one little equation. That's the first thing. That's a nice summary of all the data. Secondly, this, can somebody tell me what's another good reason for having, even a better reason for having the equation of a straight line? By the way, I'm sorry, Pop, before I go back to this, I wanted to say something else. I told you that a 45-degree line has a slope of 1, a 50-degree line has a slope of 1 point something. It gets bigger and bigger. What happens when it goes very close to vertical? And so you're going across a little bit of an x, and you, know, you shoot from here to here, and the y shoots up from here to here. So the change in y is really giant, and the change in x is relatively small. What's going to be the slope of an almost vertical line? No, almost vertical. Almost vertical will be what? What? No, oh, again, this might be 2. And this might be three, four, five, six. When it starts, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When it reaches vertical, 
you have, if it's vertical, then there's no change in the x. So it's got to be zero. So that's infinite or undefined. It's very, very. But the point, well, maybe my question was not that clear. When it's almost vertical, the answer is a very large number. It could be 10 trillion. It could be a billion. But it was going to be a, the, the, close, the closer it is to the vertical, the bigger the slope. But eventually, it gets larger and larger and larger and larger. What happens if we start going down, let's say, 40 degree line? So instead of being 1, it'd be 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. What happens when it's horizontal? Then it's zero. You have your name, good. Is it, when it's horizontal, it's a slope of zero. But it doesn't have to be stop at zero. You can have a negative slope, for example, if the line is going like this. Then it's minus, mi this might be minus one. If it's 45 degrees below the axis, minus one, minus 1.7. 1 it's eventually get minus infinity or something like that. Okay, that's our brief review of slopes and intercepts. So getting back to our situation, what was I, what was I saying? What was I saying? Um, Yes, I was, I was asking you, once we've developed, uh, again, I'm not going to ask you to take a ruler on the test and to sort of play around with it to come up and then estimate the slope. I mean, I might ask you that for the homework, the first couple of homeworks, but eventually we're going to plug the numbers into a formula, and after about two minutes of calculations, you're going to get the answer. But the question is, once you have the answer, what do you do with it? Besides having a nice summary of all your data, what's another purpose of this formula? In fact, the main purpose. There are, well, there are, not the, there are a few purposes, but what would, be, what would you imagine would be a great thing to do with that formula? Not so much test, well, uh, your, your, question, your answer is a little bit ambigu uh, ambi ambiguous, but, but you're really including uh, two possibilities. I'll give you, I'll, give you uh, I'll, I'll try to interpret it. You can actually take another sample of data. Let's say, you do, let's say this, this turns out to be the, equ the equation for men. But you do the same th for another 25 women. You're curious, so they have the same slope, the same intercept. Maybe the intercept's different because the weight's different, but maybe the slope is the same. So you can, you can test this coefficient, called a parameter, or an estimate of the parameter, technically, and compare for the males compared to the females. So you can take another sample of data, just taking your, your statement literally, and you can compare one group to another group. So that's a, you can't do that by looking at two pictures. You can't do that by comparing two equations. So that's one thing you can do with it. But that turns out to be a secondary purpose. What's the, ma the major purpose? Somebody had a hand up? Yeah. Well, that turns out to be also correct, and this is for you. Yes. That, and, and so, so between the three, you've got all three possibilities. And so one is to compare. Again, we're not going to do that. We'll do that at the end of the chapter. Compare two different groups of numbers. We can do it to see how close the dots are to the straight line. You need an equation for that, because, for example, you plug in x equals five feet, and you get somebody's weight, and then you see how many that person actually weighed. By comparing the two of them, you'll see how how close the dots are to the straight line. That will be a major part of the chapter. But the last thing, and no name, but what's your name? Nick, Nick, right? Nick is suggesting the main purpose, which is to take the equation to make a forecast or a prediction or you know prediction for the future. For example, so you say, okay, somebody's going to be six foot three. Well, how many feet is that? Six feet is 60, 72, 75 inches. Let's say, for argument's sake, let's say this is inches. I'm sorry, uh, inches. Okay, so you put in a a 75. So 75 times 1.2 is how much? How much? Just, just do it. How much is 75 times 1.2? Is it exactly 90? So it's 90 plus 137 equals how much? 127. Uh, 227. So we're saying if this formula is predicting that somebody is six foot three, they're expected to weigh 227 pounds. That's a great thing to know about because if you, you know, for example, let's say advertising and sales, you develop an equation that re represents advertising versus sales, and then after you're all finished, you say, you know what, let's, I, next month I'm planning to put in $10,000 worth of advertising into my company. How much sales can I expect to get out of that? That's a very important number for a manager because then if it's depending on that number, you might want to decide how many workers to hire, how much warehouse space to rent, and all kinds of things like that. So no, this equation is quite valuable. The only quite, when would this equation not be valuable? If, for example, the data is not a straight line data, and you think it's a straight line data, but you misapply the equation, you're going to get a wrong prediction. If, for example, it turns out the x and y are not really related. You know, in other words, if the scattergram looks something like this, this is your scattergram. In this case, what's the best possible straight line? Okay, in other words, if you try to, if you have a, I ask you, take a rule and figure out the best possible straight line of a situation where clearly the x and y are not related. Why are they not related? Because if you have a small x, you get a small y. 
On the other hand, you get a small x, you get a big y. Here you get a big x with a small y, and here you get a big x. Otherwise, there's no pattern. It's totally random. There's no, there's no pattern. The opposite of it, again, when they're closely related, it's going to be really close to a straight line. When they're far from related, what's the opposite of a straight line? A kind of a blob of dots. So if you had to fit a straight line through that data, first of all, you wouldn't do it.